Well, hello there, boys and girls. It's time for your SmackDown review. Booker T comes out. Ah. And uh, we get to some shenanigans right away. He calls Sheamus out to apologize for his actions on Raw for stealing Del Rio's car. What the fuck is up with WWE and their faggy, apologetic, emo trend that's going on right now? Let's recap. Earlier this year, we had Sheamus apologize for um, attacking the referee. He had to pay a fine. He apologized a thousand times. Then you had Big Show crying on his hands and knees. Then you had Daniel Bryan apologizing to AJ. Then you had CM Punk on Raw apologizing to AJ. And now you have Sheamus apologizing again. And I think he also apologized some other time for something else he did. But whatever. 2012 is by far the most PG year I've ever seen. And holy fucking shit. Uh, how many times are you going to make this guy? I mean, this guy was driving, seen it through tables a couple of years ago. And... Um, now what do you got? You got this guy just apologizing to everybody. I mean, what the fuck are they doing? Anyway, they make a match uh, tonight. Del Rio and Sheamus, they agree to have a match. And instead of having it at SummerSlam, they're going to have it tonight. First match of the night, Sin Cara defeats Cody Rhodes. An okay short match. Very, very short. Got a feeling there's going to be a rematch at SummerSlam. Um, but it, it looked good. And Sin Cara... I don't. I, looks like it's the same guy. It wasn't money in the bank, but uh, he didn't botch anything, so that was good. Um, Sin Cara wins with a roll up, and um, you know it was okay, short but okay, passable stuff. Then uh, up next we get a pointless fucking segment. Daniel Bryan comes out. He talks about not wanting to uh, face Kane at SummerSlam. And he says he should be in the uh, the WWE title match. And I agree. It should be a fatal four-way. But WWE wants to give us the same old fucking shit. Another kane Bryan match. And AJ comes out saying that both of them are great athletes. Like, are you fucking kidding? Are you really going to put Kane and Daniel Bryan in the same sentence when you're using the term great athletes? I mean, holy shit. This guy is practically carrying the WWE athletically on his shoulders. And uh, and this is how they show their appreciation for him. By putting him in this cliche matchup at SummerSlam. And not only that, to top it all off, AJ says to shake Kane's hand. And like a pussy, Daniel Bryan goes to shake his hand and gets his ass kicked by Kane. What the fuck is up with everybody listening to authority on this show? What happened to the rebellious nature of the wrestlers? Even in the PG era, even in like 08, 09, 010, um, you know, 2010, 2011, uh, you know, you had wrestlers still disobeying what the GM said and, you know, going against their authority figures and, 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 and kicking ass. But, I don't know, 2012, they're really fucking toning it down. They're really trying to make it a really, really PG, G-rated mess. Uh, so, that segment was just pointless. Then up next, we got Jinder Mahal, and he defeats two jobbers because he's trying to show up Ryback, and he beats them quicker than Ryback ever did. It's an okay way to further the feud, but there's one question here. Do we even want to fucking see this feud? I don't. Ryback sucks. Jinder sucks. Let's move on from this shit. You know, both of these guys are fucking worthless. You know, he failed to skip Sheffield, as I always say, and they're trying another gimmick again. Um, Jinder Mahal, you know, you got one uh, Iron Sheik ripoff, and then you got a, a guy who took RVD's tank top and is is trying to be Goldberg. I mean, it's like the battle of the ripoffs. Then we got the highlight reel with Jericho and Vicky, and I actually really enjoyed this segment. A lot of good mic work from Jericho. Dolph Ziggler comes out, attacks Jericho. Finally, he looks like a strong contender for the world title. And this feud actually seems like it's pretty decent. Uh, Ziggler looks strong this week, unlike 
you know, the past couple of weeks when he was looking like a pussy, losing to Alex Riley, for instance, and just getting kicked in the face by Sheamus constantly. So hopefully they're past that stage of embarrassing Ziggler, and now they could, you know, start fresh. I mean, he's been the Money in the Bank winner for over a month now, um, but, you know, uh, I guess, you know, there's no time like the present to start fresh. So, you know, you got you got that going for him at least. But this was pretty enjoyable. And, and Chris Jericho says that Y2J is back. And I didn't know that he stopped being Y2J. But I understand what he's saying. He wants to get back to being old school Jericho. And then he did the never ever again stuff. So, you know, I like to see old school Jericho. Because new school Jericho is kind of boring. Attitude Jericho is coming back. Ruthless Aggression Nero Jericho is coming back. So, you know, that's oh, that's a plus. Then up next we get the last appearance ever of the fake Arsenio Hall AW as he guides the primetime players um, into a terrible match with Primo and Epico. This was just a quick one-minute match. Uh, AW jumps off of the commentary booth into the ring. And, uh, and and gets Primo and Epico disqualified, um, and you know this just shows that they are they're continuing to cover. They don't have any confidence in their tag teams, and now the primetime players are going to be released because now AW their mouthpiece, the only thing that was keeping that team alive, um, the only reason why they brought it all off of NXT was because of AW. And now that he's gone, they're soon going to be gone, and you know there's no doubt about that. Then we've got uh, Antonio Cesaro defeating Christian, um, and uh, I, I mean Christian defeating Cesaro in this match, and uh, I was actually kind of happy to see that. Um, pretty good match here, you know. I love the move that he does where he throws him up in the air. It's the very European uppercut for all the ROH fans out there. You know who, who uh, recognized the reference there. So, you know th this was good, and hopefully this leads to um, maybe a triple threat match for the United States title. I don't know really wh where it's leading, but um, you know it, it was nice to see Christian working with Cesaro. It's refreshing to see. Um, you know you really can't complain the, uh, about you know them getting Cesaro on TV in any way, shape, or form. Um, I don't know, for some reason, you know, this match had a very unimportant feel to it. Crowd wasn't really into it. Um, you know, it's just that because Cesaro hasn't been on TV for so long, they just throw him out there, and Christian really is, like, lacking credibility. It was a, it was a decent match. It was a two-star match, but uh, really felt unimportant. Um, but, you know, it was a good effort. And like I said, I hope it leads to a match at SummerSlam. Um, then up next, we got Caitlyn being hired as uh, Booker T's assistant. But it doesn't sit well with Eve. And uh, wait, 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 what? Who's Caitlyn? Oh, yeah, she's that, that ugly bitch from NXT. Oh, yeah. But um, this is so stupid. Why is Caitlyn even here? No charisma, no looks, no wrestling ability. She fails on all three, you know, so, like, what the fuck are you going to do with her? You, you can't do anything with a bitch like her. Get rid of her. But they're going to have a match next week to, you know, it's going to determine who's going to be Booker T's assistant. So, uh, no one's excited about that. Then, uh, we've got Rey Mysterio defeating Miz. Um, not really too sure I agree with the Miz losing here to Mysterio, but I got a feeling they're going to have an icy belt match at um the uh at SummerSlam so I mean this was okay like another like um two star match or very quick match but you know good action throughout um so you know I I'm liking where the Miz is going here but I you know I hope he lo he wins it at, at SummerSlam Miz losing here because you know he's still trying to get over that that horribly embarrassing losing streak from a couple of months back. Then finally we get the uh, Sheamus Del Rio. No, wait a minute, bait and switch. 
a bunch of fake cops come out and attack uh, Sheamus, and um, and that's we don't get the match. Figures, right? Typical WWE bait and switch, false advertising. They're no better than TNA with the false advertising. Um, how TNA used to be with the false advertising. They used to do this shit all the time. You know, um, yeah, WWE is getting notorious for this as of late. They've been false advertising like crazy. They said the match was going to happen. People probably wait, you know, people who don't watch the whole episode of um, SmackDown. This is how they get their rings. They usually like announce the main event. People will tune in for the last hour. The match doesn't happen. People are never going to come back when WWE pulls this type of shit. No, you know, WWE likes to wonder why their ratings are down so much. It's because of this type of shit that they're doing right here. Horrible booking, you know, um, and just a bait and switch that was lame as fuck. And we're still going to have to see this mess of a match at at SummerSlam, is anybody looking forward to this? The, the match already sucked at Money in the Bank, so why are we going to do this again? Um, overall, it was an, a very average episode of SmackDown. I can't really say it was good. I can't say it was bad. It was just very average. Very unexciting. You know, a couple little decent matches here and there, but not much. And, um, you know, this was way better than Raw. If SmackDown is better than Raw. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. Because in terms of match quality, this was better. The only thing I got to complain about is you knew that that Sheamus and Del Rio match was not going to take place. And you want to know why? Because the time here in New York was 9.55 and they were still doing the ring uh, introductions. So how the fuck are they going to have a match? I was figuring that maybe Sheamus was going to pull the Daniel Bryan and, and, and beat him in like 18 seconds. But, uh, no, they just, they, they do something, uh, you know, just as terrible and just bait and switch the whole fucking match around. It's insane. Um, but, you know, SmackDown is better than Raw, really, as of late. And, uh, you know, it's all fucked up and they sometimes... You have it when superstars on the internet is better than both shows with their matches. So, you know, I don't. WWE's quality is all over the board. They have some good matches here, terrible shows, and they go back. I I don't know the direction of the company right now is abysmal. It just there's no consistency at all, and it's gonna take them a while. You know, with the, if they keep continuing with the same mindset for them to get back on the right track. Um, but, yeah, like I said, this is an average show. So, you know, um, not bad, not good, but passable.